The shooters walked to the opposite side of the library, to two rows of computers. Todd hid behind the administrative counter. Kyle Velasquez, 16, was sitting at the north row of computers, police later said he had not hidden underneath the desk when Klebold and Harris had first entered the library, but had curled up under the computer table. Klebold shot and killed Velasquez, hitting him in the head and back. Klebold and Harris put down their ammunition-filled duffel bags at the south or lower row of computers and reloaded their weapons. They walked back toward the windows facing the outside staircase. Noticing police evacuating students outside the school, Harris said, Let's go kill some cops. He and Klebold began to shoot out the windows in the direction of the police, who returned fire, no one was injured. After firing through the windows at evacuating students and the police, Klebold fired his shotgun at a nearby table, injuring three students named Patrick Ireland, Daniel Stapleton, and Mackay Hall. He removed his trench coat. As Klebold fired at the three, Harris grabbed his shotgun and walked toward the lower row of computer desks, firing a single shot under the first desk without looking. He hit 14-year-old Stephen Kerno with a mortal wound to the neck. Harris shot under the adjacent computer desk, injuring 17-year-old Casey Ruxiger in the hand, arm and shoulder. When she started gasping in pain, Harris told her to, quit your bitching. Harris walked over to the table across from the lower computer row, slapped the surface twice and knelt, saying, peekaboo, to 17-year-old Cassie Bernal before shooting her once in the head, killing her instantly. Harris had been holding the shotgun with one hand at this point and the weapon hit his face in recoil, breaking his nose. Initial reports suggest that Harris asked Bernal, do you believe in God? To which she replied yes, before getting killed. However, three students who witnessed Bernal's death, including Emily Wyant, who had been hiding beneath the table with her, have testified that Bernal did not exchange words with Harris after his initial taunt although Wyant stated Bernal had been praying prior to her murder. After fatally shooting Bernal, Harris turned toward the next table, where Brie Pasquale sat next to the table rather than under it. Harris asked Pasquale if she wanted to die, and she responded with a plea for her life. Witnesses later reported that Harris seemed disoriented possibly from the heavily bleeding wound to his nose. As Harris taunted Pasquale, Klebold noted Ireland trying to provide aid to Hall who had suffered a wound to his knee. As Ireland tried to help Hall, his head rose above the table, Klebold shot him a second time, hitting him twice in the head and once in the foot. Ireland was knocked unconscious, but survived. Klebold walked toward another set of tables, where he discovered 18-year-old Isaiah Schulz, 16-year-old Matthew Kector and 16-year-old Craig Scott, the younger brother of Rachel Scott, hiding under one table. All three were popular athletes. Klebold tried to pull Shules out from under the table. He called to Harris, shouting, Reb. Reb was Harris' online identity. Harris left Pasquale and joined him. According to witnesses, Klebold and Harris taunted Shules for a few seconds, making derogatory racial comments. Harris knelt down and shot Shules once in the chest at close range, killing him instantly. Klebold also knelt down and opened fire, hitting and killing Kector. Harris then yelled, Who's ready to die next? Meanwhile, Scott was uninjured, he lay in the blood of his friends, feigning death. Harris turned and threw a CO2 bomb at the table where Hall, Stapleton, and Ireland were located. It landed on Stapleton's thigh, and Hall quickly threw it away. Harris walked toward the bookcases between the west and center section of tables in the library. He jumped on one and shook it, then shot in an unknown direction within that general area. Klebold walked through the main area, past the first set of bookcases, the central desk area and a second set of bookcases into the east area. Harris walked from the bookcase he had shot from, past the central area to meet Klebold. The latter shot at a display case located next to the door, then turned and shot toward the closest table, hitting an injuring 17-year-old Mark Hinton in the head and shoulder. 
he turned toward the table to his left and fired, injuring 18-year-olds Lisa Krutz and Valine Schnur with the same shotgun bullet. Klebold then moved toward the same table and fired with the Tech-9, killing 18-year-old Lauren Townsend. Harris approached another table where two girls were hiding. He bent down to look at them and dismissed them as pathetic. Harris then moved to another table where he fired twice, injuring 16-year-olds Nicole Nolan and John Tomlin. When Tomlin attempted to move away from the table, Klebold kicked him. Harris then taunted Tomlin's attempt at escape before Klebold shot the youth repeatedly, killing him. Harris then walked back over to the other side of the table where Lauren Townsend lay dead. Behind the table, a 16-year-old girl named Kelly Fleming had, like Brie Pasquale, sat next to the table rather than beneath it due to a lack of space. Harris shot Fleming with his shotgun, hitting her in the back and killing her instantly. He shot at the table behind Fleming, hitting Townsend and Kreutz again, and wounding 18-year-old Gina Park. An autopsy later revealed that Townsend died from the earlier gunshots inflicted by Klebold. The shooters moved to the center of the library, where they continued to reload their weapons at a table there. Harris noticed a student hiding nearby and asked him to identify himself. It was John Savage, an acquaintance of Klebold's who had come to the library to study for a history test. Savage said his name, believing they were targeting only jocks, which he himself was not, in an attempt to get them to not kill him. He then asked Klebold what they were doing, to which he answered, Oh, just killing people. Savage asked if they were going to kill him. Possibly because of a fire alarm, Klebold said. What? Savage asked again whether they were going to kill him. Klebold hesitated, then told him to leave. Savage fled immediately and escaped through the library's main entrance. After Savage had left, Harris turned and fired his carbine at the table directly north of where they'd been, grazing the ear of 15-year-old Daniel Mauser. When Mauser fought back, Harris fired again and hit Mauser in the face at close range, killing him. Both shooters moved south and fired randomly under another table, critically injuring two 17-year-olds, Jennifer Doyle and Austin Eubanks, and fatally wounding 17-year-old Corey DePooter. DePooter, the last to die in the massacre, at 11.35 in the morning, was later credited with having kept his friends calm during the ordeal. There were no further injuries after 11.35. They had killed 10 people in the library and wounded 12. Of the 56 library hostages, 34 remained unharmed. Investigators would later find that the shooters had enough ammunition to have killed them all. At this point, several witnesses later said they heard Harris and Klebold comment that they no longer found a thrill in shooting their victims. Klebold was quoted as saying, Maybe we should start knifing people, that might be more fun. Both youths were equipped with knives. They moved away from the table and went toward the library's main counter. Harris threw a molot of cocktail toward the southwestern end of the library but it failed to explode. Harris went around the east side of the counter and Klebold joined him from the west. They converged close to where Todd had moved after having been wounded. Harris and Klebold mocked Todd, who was wearing a white hat. When the shooters demanded to see his face, Todd partly lifted his hat so his face would remain obscured. When Klebold asked Todd to give him one reason why he should not kill him, Todd said, I don't want trouble. Klebold said, You, Todd, used to call me a fag. Who's a fag now? The shooters continued to taunt Todd and debated killing him, but they eventually walked away. Harris's nose was bleeding heavily, which may have caused him to decide to leave the library. Klebold turned and fired a single shot into an open library staff break room hitting a small television. Before they left, Klebold slammed a chair down on top of the computer terminal and several books on the library counter, directly above the bureau where Patty Nielsen had hidden. The two walked out of the library at 11.36. And in the hostage situation there. Cautiously, fearing the shooter's return, 34 uninjured and 10 injured survivors began to evacuate the library through the north door, which led to the sidewalk adjacent to the west entrance. Patrick Ireland, unconscious, and Lisa Kreutz, unable to move, remained in the building.
Patty Nielsen joined Brian Anderson and the three library staff in the exterior break room, into which Klebold had earlier fired shots. They locked themselves in and remained there until they were freed, at approximately 3.30 in the afternoon. After leaving the library, Harris and Klebold entered the science area, where they threw a small fire bomb into an empty storage closet. It caused a fire, which was put out by a teacher hidden in an adjacent room. The duo proceeded toward the south hallway, where they shot into an empty science room. At approximately 11.44, Harris and Klebold were captured on the school security cameras as they re-entered the cafeteria. The recording shows Harris kneeling on the landing and firing a single shot toward one of the propane bombs he and Klebold had earlier left in the cafeteria in an unsuccessful attempt to detonate it. He took a sip from one of the drinks left behind as Klebold approached the propane bomb and examined it. Klebold lit a Molotov cocktail and threw it at the propane bomb. As the two left the cafeteria, the Molotov cocktail exploded, partially detonating one of the propane bombs at 11.46. Two minutes later, approximately one gallon of fuel ignited in the same vicinity, causing a fire that was extinguished by the fire sprinklers. After leaving the cafeteria, the duo returned to the main north and south hallways of the school, shooting aimlessly. Harris and Klebold walked through the south hallway into the main office before returning to the north hallway. On several occasions, the pair looked through the windows of classroom doors, making eye contact with students hidden inside, but neither Harris nor Klebold tried to enter any of the rooms. They even reloaded their firearms close by the room that Dave Sanders was in. After leaving the main office, Harris and Klebold walked toward a bathroom, where they taunted students hidden inside, making such comments as, We know you're in there, and, let's kill anyone we find in here. Neither attempted to enter the bathroom. At 11.55, the two returned to the cafeteria, where they briefly entered the school kitchen. They returned up the staircase and into the south hallway at 11.58.